Beloved Swiss board community, thank you so much for watching. And today we're doing another impromptu AMA with the team to reassure everyone and to make sure that the facts are straight. And before we kick off and talking about the Swiss board side of things, it's very important that we talk about what has triggered FUD. We've seen multiple events that went unfortunately south. We had Terra with UST. Now we have Celsius today. And there are many issues that are happening, many attacks that are happening in the backgrounds that we perhaps need to mention before we go into the Swiss board details. But I know Anthony is something that really matters to you and some things that create frustrations on what's happening in the market. But it really seems almost like some sort of Wall Street attack or coordinated attacks from multiple players at the same time. But what are you seeing right now based on your experience from traditional finance, what's happening in the DeFi world today? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, first of all, thank you for the community to tune in today, to listen and to, to learn. Hopefully we're learning every day. It doesn't matter how professional you are, you have to learn every day. And I think that's one of the motto of SwissBorg is every time I have an interview and I say, are you ready to learn every day? Because that's, that's you know, what it is required to be, to be happy, I think, in this world. But beside that, coming back to what we're living now, I think the, when you look at every crisis, every moment of strong volatility, it's always the same. It's linked to ex let's say, uncareful leverage. It's the usage of leverage into an unhealthy manner, going for very long duration. So taking liabilities to borrow money and use this money into investment scheme or strategy that have very long duration, meaning that they are not going to be liquid. And I want to emphasize that at SwissBorg, never, ever, we have used leverage in order to boost one of our metrics. And the guys that are very loyal to the ecosystem, they know it very well, right? When we start the Smart Yield program, we had a fantastic yield because the yield was fantastic in every DeFi platform. It was the early days. And then the yield normalized as any more major market. But we never try to leverage or to confuse or to be in the competition with the other because we knew the nature of what we are providing is about transparency and more importantly, it's about managing the risk, and which means in return, no uh, uncareful usage of leverage. So I want to reassure again the community that we never use leverage and we're never going to be using leverage. And for that reason, we are secure. The part that upset me the most in this moment is if you look at the people that have created six months ago all the trend and let's say all the eccentric bullish market, the people that claim to be the expert, and of course, when the market goes up, it's very easy to be the expert because any call you can make is going to be seen as successful from a performance point of view. But the same person, so the medias or the pretending medias, today they do the opposite, right? They play the Cassandra, they, they talk about things that they don't understand. And when I see people comparing, for example, our yield program with the other CFI yield program, you know, may, namely at the moment Celsius, it upset me a lot because it shows that the same person that are supposed to relay the information, they have no clue what they're talking about. And all this misinformation as well, when we decide to listen, when we decide to go with this misinformation, we create what we have right now, which is a circumstances that's going to uh, benefit to few, right? And it's going to be impacting many. And you know, for fact, that's what we have been fighting against at SwissBorg. And of course, it's, it's a moment where, again, we, we are learning. We're not perfect. There is things that we're learning every day. But we were always very loyal to our promise. And our situation is much more different. And we are going to review that with Jeremy, our CFO, uh, Cyrus, our CEO, Christophe, our beautiful <laughs> uh, community. <laughs> and uh, uh, compliance officer and, uh, and Alex, of, obviously, that all of you know very well. <clears throat> but I think that's the, the main message is you can trust us, right? You can trust us. We've been very faithful. I think I've seen many times in Twitter saying people that, oh, SwissBorg is so transparent that actually that, that this is their weakness. And I agree, right, in some, in some extent, when you become extremely transparent in some 
cases, it, it could you know, it could be a weakness, but it's never a weakness when it's your DNA. You know, we've been transparent since the beginning, and when we say you can trust us, nothing is at danger, nothing is in leverage. I think that's the good moment where we can prove that the choice that we made in the past that were not always easy are, are paying off, and we are very happy for our community. Thank you so much, Anthony. And Cyrus, your comments on the current markets and also the FUD that's being generated, the cascading of all these, you know, negative events. What's your say and how are you seeing this at the moment? Yeah, it's the testing phase, as I always say, right? It's, uh, you know, it's always easy to run around and go to the lake when, you know, it's beautiful weather. It's always more difficult in the harder times. And and it's it's a beautiful time to, to reflect on, on the long run, right? and how to zoom out. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, bumps on the road, but we're very comfortable to say that we're one, one of the only, only few ICOs that are still here. Um, we're one of the, the only projects that have always been very transparent, but more importantly, have more than transparency is I think we put at the best our community always at first instead of ourselves. I think so that is, is probably one of the best things we have done at Swissborg is really always think about how our community could prevail and then eventually <laughs> how do we prevail together, right? And 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 for that reason, this is why we're having this today and I'm very excited uh, to follow up with uh, these different questions we're gonna we're gonna talk about. Amazing. So guys, we talked about the recent events that we're gonna talk about the present and Swissborg specifically. But before doing that, I think one of the biggest fears when it comes to CFI applications or exchanges is the counterparty risk or what we call default risk. And that's probably the first type of risk that we're going to talk about and discuss with our CFO here, Jeremy Boban. And Jeremy, you know, I guess what really scares the community is some of the terms and conditions we saw with some of the other competitor apps that are saying if the company is insolvent, then the assets will be lost. Uh, what are your comments, Jeremy, on this type of fear? How, do, how can we actually um, alleviate the fear from our community and users? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Alex, for this question. As we've been repeating that since we got this license in Estonia is this license forces us to segregate user funds. The wallet license, forces us to segregate 100% of user funds from Swissborg owned funds. And this has been followed very strictly since day one. And we have never commingled user funds and Swissborg owned funds to pay for the runway. Uh, this would be a big breach in our license and therefore we would never take that risk, especially that on our runway, so as everybody knows, last year was a fantastic bull market. Uh, we had a chance to generate a lot of revenues. And during the summer, end of the summer, we uh, started to see things turn a bit more complicated in a way. So we decided, because we have this very Swiss approach that sometimes is a bit difficult to own when markets are booming, but in times like these, it's very good to have. Uh, we decided to uh, keep our own funds, so Swissbox Treasury, excluding CHSBs, uh, of two thirds in fiat and stable coins and one third in crypto, namely BTC, ETH, BNB, etc. These are the biggest uh, holdings we have in the one third of cryptos uh, on our current own funds. We never took any uh, exposure on UST. Therefore, we didn't take a blow there. Also, I want to precise it for when we say stable coins. So, of course, that our treasury is suffering today, like everybody. It, we are not immune to the market uh, uh, downturn that we are seeing today. But nevertheless, we are studied to weather the current storm and we are confident in the runway we will have in front of us for the next X months. Uh, I can say a number here. 24, between 30 and 24, depends of course on how things are gonna go. It's difficult to anticipate everything, but we have uh, been able to secure that and to make sure we can continue building and continue the commitment we have towards our community once again. Everything is here to build the ecosystem 
uh, as you know, guys. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jeremy. Well said, brother. Yeah, really well said. So I think just to summarize everyone out there, in terms of default counterparty risk, as you can see, Swiss Borg has a very long leeway. That runway actually is extremely long, especially for the crypto space. So if we have a bear market that is prolonged, we are ready for that. So that is one kind of very important factor that you can just reassure yourselves. And then the second and, and part- just, If yeah. I just may, we already went through it right in 2018, 19, and we strived, right guys? So don't forget that. Our token lost 99% and then in 2020, I think so we did whatever, 50 or 100X from that. So yeah. And one very important thing is that we always look at our treasury, excluding CHSBs. For us, CHSB is very, very dear to our heart, like everybody knows, but it's also cherry on the cake. At the end of the day, we need to pay salaries. We need to pay a lot of things, and we don't want to waste CHSBs on that. So when we talk about runway, it's always X CHSBs to make sure that it's a sort of worst case scenario for us. Just want the community to be well assured on that as well. Thank you for the position, Jeremy. That That's really important. And I think there's one more part that we need to emphasize on what you were saying, Jeremy, is because on top of the treasury, the accounts were segregated. So let me just try to paraphrase this. Segregation means that Swiss board does not hold the funds. So if we were to become insolvent, which is not the case, but or even if we were crooks or scammers or fraudsters and we ran away, we could not touch the user funds. Is that correct, Jeremy? Yeah, that's correct. The user funds are 100% segregated from Swiss bank own funds. There's no mixing or commingling, as we say. And uh, uh, reconciliations are done regularly to make sure that uh, none of the user funds are uh, being, uh, in a way, touched by uh, Swiss bank in any way possible. Thanks for the transparency. And I just wanted to stress, you know, like a lot of people out there in the market today, we kind of shift, right, from one extreme to the other, especially in the crypto market. It's a highly emotional market. And a lot of people are thinking now, CFI is a bad resort. I should put all my money on DeFi. But I guess Web3 wallets do have also their own risks, which I'd love to share. And I don't know if you guys have any comments, but on top of the key management and the losses, I do want to share a little bit more perspective. And this is a bit of a dark story. I'm sorry to be a negative Nancy or, or sharing these things. But when you're managing Web3 wallets, on top of having to manage your keys, guys, if you have an accident, let's say you lose a part of you know, your, your mental awareness, your cognitive behavior, or you even die, which happened to a dear friend of mine exactly one month and a half ago. He was very organized. He had all his private keys for his wife. I've been spending weekends and hours and hours trying to recover them. And even though he was extremely well organized, that specific person is struggling uh, to get his funds down to his wife, despite having me, who I'm going on all the different farms. I'm trying to really find ways to recu recuperate as many assets as possible to pass on down to his family, which in a case of a C5 situation, guys, you don't have that risk of uh, the keys. Obviously, you don't want to share them. But if you pass, which has happened before, if someone can prove through a death certificate and a marriage certificate that the person is linked to you, all funds will be recovered. Not just with SwissBorg, but in many C5 platforms, they can guarantee you that regardless of whether you lose something, you have a tragic event. And I'm sorry, guys, I know I'm a bit pessimistic, but Anthony, like, is it important to understand the DeFi risks as well when you have a Web3 wallet? What are your thoughts on this? Absolutely. I mean, even someone that is as careful as I am, uh, I've been, unfortunately, losing a little bit of money as well with DeFi. And I'm going to explain very quickly is when you have, when you manage a web-free wallet, each time you want, because of course, this money is not going to stand there. We'll, what you would like to do is to exchange, to interact with other platforms. And what you do when you do that is you allow the platform to spend the money, a very specific coin in your wallet. When you do so, if the platform become compromised, then you give an unlimited access to your to your coin. And I've been a victim of, for example, losing 5,000 BUSD on Binance Smart Chain. Reason is this protocol that was a landing borrowing platform was the key was stolen. And as a result, all the BUSD 
that were in my wallet and in the wallet of many, many other users were vampires, uh, were absorbed, were just withdrawn without any consent uh, to the platform. So the managing DeFi wallet or Web3 wallet, to be precise, come with uh, struggles as well. And, and again, there is no difference with us because we are 100% segregated. It means that, again, or any event that will impact the operation of the company will not impact your farm. If I may add a um, comment on that, for me, it's exactly the same issue that I have with my mother, for example. Right now, I told, I told her, I want to be able to control your private key. And the best solution for her is that I say you install the SwissBorg WhatsApp on a secondary phone that you, that you keep home. And whatever happened, I'll have always a way to recover her account. If it was on a Web3 wallet, I would have no access. With that, I can trust my mother. She will not carry her phone away so she doesn't risk anything. And I have a recovery process. That makes a lot of sense. And I think it's really important, guys, that we not only talk about CFI risk, but here we're talking also about DeFi, right? Custodial versus non-custodial risks. And Cyrus, is it fair to say that with what the system we have in place with segregated accounts, but on top of having this recovery process, that we're kind of taking the best of both worlds? Yeah, I think so. That's been the bridge that we always, you know, the off-chain and on-chain world, right? The, the bridge that we're trying to to build. And and that's why it brings not only the best user experience, but overall the best risk adjusted uh, experience. And I think so that's something that's extremely important that we always has been doing on the regulatory side, on the corporate side, on the investment side, on every side, we're always really good at taming those risks, right? And and offering therefore the best optimal product uh, for you guys. And and very interesting to see what's going to be launching hopefully uh, late this summer as well. Great, thank you so much, Sai. And another, so we talked about custodial, we talked about the CFI risk, right? Which are counterparty defaults. We talked about DeFi risk, which is private keys, smart contracts, death, and all these type of tragic scenarios. But one thing, Jeremy, as well, like as everyone knows out there, Swissborg is a regulated and licensed company. Why is it important to be licensed in these type of conditions and scenarios? It's important at in every type of, of environment to be regulated uh, because it brings a frame. And typically, the framework that this Estonian license had brought us from the start to segregate, once again, the account, uh, forced us, in a way, to protect our users. And it's one of the reasons also we went for that now uh, more than three years ago. It's because it forced us in a way to put up a setup to be able to be the safest possible towards our users. And having regulation is a great thing to, uh, to, to have to build robust and compliant uh, 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 products. Of course, there, there has limitation, and we all uh, want to have a regulation that fits the growth needs and the innovation that we are that we want to bring to to our community. But it also has great uh, impact, like the rules that are, let's say, uh, pragmatic, and that makes and guarantee users' uh, safety or user asset safety. I'm not talking so of of the AML side, etc., because this is not, I think, the topic today. But if I may add one point on that, it's also very important to have this framework because it gives us also much more credibility with our banking partners. That's all allow you to, to offer you a seamless experience when you deposit and when you withdraw. And this is also thanks to this legal framework that we have been building and developing. Thank you so much, Jeremy and Chris. Anthony, just a comment on you, uh, from you with regards to MPC technology, because we're talking about how Swissport, the treasury is safe, the setup, the structure, the operations are safe. But what about the actual technology? Uh, could you tell us if, briefly, I know it's complicated to explain what MPC or multi-party computation technology is, but why, why is that the technology we've chosen for storing assets? It's a, it's a great question. And I think at the end of the day, you need to trust as well, as, to some extent, right? Uh, you need to ask questions. You don't necessarily need to have the competencies to understand these question, questions, but then you can look for hints and an indicator of how oh, these guys are know what they're talking about. And I think when you look at our engineering team, it's the bigger team in the company. We've been 
very strong since the very beginning and phases what are the risks to go in crypto versus traditional assets because it needs it requires very specific management and we've been reviewing a lot of technology and we trust the expert in the company that have been in the technological space forever and they say mpc is the future is the way of managing key that will allow us to be the more secure why because the private key doesn't become a single point of failure. It becomes, by an algorithm, the private keys break down and it helps to manage in a more secure manner. And it's essentially what it is, right? When we come to uh, crypto, it's all about not losing the key, like the key of the safe, but having the best strategy to manage this key, replicate this key, but never give the access to this key to a single person. Always be in a position that multiple person have to possess multiple key in order to move the fund. And that's, that's what we've been achieving with MPC technology. That's that's the essence. And um, and yeah, we, we've seen that many times into the DeFi space. I think last time I was checking at numbers, it's more than 3 billion that have been lost in DeFi just because of uh, key management. <clears throat> and again, there's few companies that you can trust in the world to do this job in the right manner. And we're one of them. Fantastic. And Cyrus, just to compliment what Anthony is saying in terms of security, we actually had some white hat hackers, right? With a penetration test a few months ago. Do you mind explaining briefly what that was and why we did it? Yeah, I mean, time to time, we, uh, I mean, we always talk, work with different auditors, different white hackers uh, that enable us to just bring more security all the time, right? We have really uh, brought probably switzerland's top uh you know cryptographers and and security guys to work at swissborg but to push even the bar a little bit further uh we do have a very well established network of 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 security auditors cybersecurity uh developers that that do these different penetration tests and there's different articles that you guys could could find on how how these things are done and now we're making sure that we're always really scrutinizing again the risk on all these different levels. Thank you so much, Sarah. So I guess the last topic before we end, we'll be talking just commentary on the current markets. You know, a lot of people guys, like literally my WhatsApp, my Telegram, people are freaking out. They've lost a lot of money. It's very stressful, especially for those who haven't been here in the previous big crypto winter, right? Where we had, we were in pain for two years, right? So a lot of people would just, you know, like a little bit of reassurance. So we already talked about how Swissborg financially is safe, technologically is safe, the assets are safe, and we have lots of runway. So, but what about the current markets? Like, are there any, you've all been through painful times, you know, the great financial, including the great financial crisis. What are some lessons, takeaways that you'd like to share? Maybe Christophe, we can start with you on what can I do right now? I'm freaking out, I lost all my money. For me, as, as you know, I have been in, in portfolio management for nearly 15 years. So for me, the, the first step is that you need to, to assess is, can you sleep with your portfolio at night? Or does it keep you awake and bother you? But one of the first elements I would say is, uh, if we look at Warren Buffett, for example, if we ask him what was the best strategy to become rich, he said, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. This quote for me, reveal a very important, important truth. In a contrary investment, you can have very large profit. So you should never panic sell. Fear and greed are your worst advisor, advisor when it comes to investment. What you should do is you should take a deep breath, analyze the situation calmly, and take the appropriate decision. Should you believe that right now the market is too risky, fall back maybe to have a bit more Ether and Bitcoin, which are safer assets. Try to be smart, not panic sell. This will be the more things that you will regret. Beautifully said, Kisa. Thank you so much. Jeremy, sorry to put you on the spot, but uh, any things that you like to think to yourself or reassure yourself when going through such testing times? Huh. Uh, it's, it's emotional. Huh? Everybody has, uh, has emotions in these types of markets. It's just the same way that you have emotions when markets are pumping. Yeah? So, uh, but I think like Chris resumed very well, um, it's great accumulation levels. Um, you need to put money that you're ready to not need to have 
So this is maybe very difficult at these times. There's a combination of macroeconomic factors. Other markets have, have been hit very badly, fixed income, equities, etc. So um, I'd say that the long term is always uh, the perspective. You need to put money that you don't need, that you should not uh, be needing to live with, and uh, that you should you don't, you do your own research. And it should be an investment that brings you purpose, but also that brings you intellectual, let's say, uh, 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 things like uh, hype or whatever. And therefore, uh, to 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 invest today should be a intellectual journey, more than anything else. Beautifully said, beautifully. Christophe, you said what you wanted. To yeah, say I wanted to add one more exa example on that. You know, for example, right now it will be very hard to predict when is the bottom. To be honest, in this market, you might have dead cat bounce, the market rebounding twenty more percent, and then changing strategy. The best way, as we all know, for investment is what we call DCA, dollar cost average. If you have some available funds, just decide, for example, oh, I'm going to put X amount, for example, every month, buy Ethereum and go into the, into the safe asset. Put them in the yield and this over this couple of years, you're going to tell me thank you because that will be what we build. That will be the foundation of your voice. That makes a lot of sense because Bitcoin, as you mentioned, Ethereum, THSB, all have the fundamentals to go through this this crypto winter or this bear market. So thank you so much for sharing that. Jeremy, ma managing the emotions was great. Ideas as well, uh, fear and greed. And I guess I would love to finish off with the commentary and closing remarks from both of our co-founders. Um, Anthony, if you want to give a closing remark and then Cyrus, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, the the... Just to finish up on, on the potential of the market, I think we still yet to see the capitulation. Uh, again, there is leverage position on the market. So I do expect more short term volatility. And I know it's hard because in this moment we are very fearful inside. Right. So it, it takes a lot of courage, but there are moments that we will not regret in the future. And I will expect that you guys, if you have time, if you have focus, if you have the money, it's a great moment to be active and but more volatility is to come because there is still a lot of leverage in this market that needs to be flushed out that then we can build on top of that i would i would like to finish by saying we live in a very short term minded world right and uh, we we are constantly exposed to a lot of information noise stimulation and i think at swissborg i was it was always our ambition to create the place where you feel home, you feel safe, but you still have the fun. We like to say we cut the noise and we keep the fun and the alpha. And the alpha sometimes is not as extravagant as for the others, but hopefully in times like today, we can see, we can show our long-term value because we Swiss, we Borg, we Swiss Borg, and that's what we want to create. Beautifully Beautiful. said, Anthony, beautifully said. <laughs> And, and Cyrus, so I guess just summarizing your point, Anthony, which I think is, is a critical part, right? It's, um, I think Warren Buffett also says he's really good at buying the lows, but he's not really good at selling the highs. So it's a lot easier, right, to buy when there's fear than to sell when you have that greed, I guess, for many or to time the, the market tops. But yeah, Cyrus, anything to compliment your brother from another mother here? Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there, there's always in the crisis the, the moment of fear and the, the moment of fortune, right? It always has those both ways to see it. And, and what, I, what I like to always say is first is that yesterday at a barbecue sounds like, Cyrus, look, I already lost like $80,000 this year on my portfolio. And I'm like, no, you lost 50%. So we start always thinking about percentage. It's not the money, it's the percentage. It's, it's a very gradual thing, I think, because it will, if you put percentage, then like a dollar value to percentage is very different. Then you start getting into the game, right? And, 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 and the second part is, you know what's happening here? It's that we talked about it a zillion times. The macro picture is not great. Industry picture is not great. Nothing is going very well. However, always focus on the bright side. We're on the best investment class for the next 20, 30 years, right? It's, we know that technology is the saver of the planet or the destructor, 
it's it's us that will with decentralization make it brighter or make it darker so you you're in the right thing if you're listening you're doing the right thing you know should you be cautious of course everyone has a different risk policy in his life right you can never lose the more that that you're able to you you should never invest the more you're able to lose right that's the the basics of everything but then he's always like anthony c you have to zoom out and understand what are the game changers bitcoin we know that's it's the mother theresa of how providing value on technology right how everyone could be part of decentralization ethereum how ethereum is going to change with proof of stake is just crazy think about all the gas issues like from open c platforms for DeFi platforms for sending out just usdc around the world all the applications that will be built on it top that with video games with metaverse and more and more there's going to be so much great things to done we already achieved one big part on the beacon right there's two more parts to go and then we're in this new era and and and, and obviously the chsb you know you see exchange tokens essentially that have been the last five years they're going to be here in the next five years all the little new guys who came in 2020 95 percent of these guys will be out it's as always right flips to the next and the five percent will change the game right the same as that was done in 2017 18 five percent stayed and 95 percent went out and we're going to see this and this so what you guys have to concentrate is really allocating to those three best projects that you believe in and making sure that you know are we going to try new lows maybe but the most important is to be in the trend it's not to wait out to buy the best at the low because you never know when the best low is. You always have to be active. I don't get out of positions. I just build positions. And sometimes when in senior euphoria, I do start to get out some, right? I see there's bananas, crazy things going on. I take maybe 20, 30% of my position. I lower it down and then I wait for these times and I accumulate and I accumulate and I accumulate more. And this is what I've been doing with Bitcoin. That's what we've been doing with Ethereum. And this is what I've been doing with more token. <laughs> just accumulating and potentially sometimes selling out when, you know, just going too much bananas. And, and, and now I think so in terms of community, there's a lot of people trying to see, oh, who's the next one gonna fail? Who's gonna be next in US Terra? Oh, I'm so happy that USDD, Justin Sun is having facing problems. That's the wrong mindset. I wish the very best to Celsius. I really hope that they're gonna be solvent. They're gonna be able to pay out oh, everything in their earn. They're gonna be very profitable next year. I really sell it. it. Are they competitors to us? I do believe we're competitors. But at the end, we need at this time not to act like these voters that are really trying to short these people down and then you know wipe them out of the surface or buy them out at a very cheap price. At this time, we need you guys, Borgers, to be strong, to be to be proud, and to share that love to the world. Because it's these times where wealth accumulation and wealth building is gonna happen for the next five years. Five years from now, three years from now. <laughs> If people are watching this video in 2025, you know, and you would have seen, you know, this is worth token at 20 cents, uh, you know, or Bitcoin at this price or Ethereum at 1200 or 1300, you would be like, oh, I should have listened. Uh, no financial advice, of course. But like always, build a greater future, build a better decentralized world and trust the right people that do so. Beautiful notes to end on. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Hope you're all okay. We love you uh, from the bottom of our hearts. And uh, we are Swissborg, right, guys? We are Swissborg. We are Swissborg. We are Swissborg. Thank you, guys. Bye.